left now, are there again? No, 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 there aren't. Um, it's because uh, Jimmy Beck, he went very quickly, didn't he? Yes, Jimmy died so, sadly uh, when he was uh, only, only 47. And Arthur Lowe's dead, isn't he? Yeah, yes, uh, yes, Arthur Lowe. I wonder where this interview's going. <laughs> yeah, Arthur Lowe, he's gone. Yes, yes. Isn't, it? isn't John Lemessurier dead? Well, John Lemessurier, yes. Uh, he wrote his own epitaph, didn't he? Conked out. Yes, he did, yes. Um, <laughs> is the Scotsman still with us? <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, he's gone. No, I'm afraid John uh, Laurie's gone. I'm very sad for me because his godfather's my children. Uh, Dad's Army ran from 1968 until 1977. The central characters were played by Arthur Lowe, John Lemessurier, Clive Dunn, Arnold Ridley, John Laurie, James Beck and Ian Lavender. They were dubbed the Magnificent Seven. There were 80 episodes of Dad's Army. And Gary Richardson, our own Gary Richardson, attended many of the recordings at BBC Television Centre. Gary went along to meet Ian Lavender, who played Private Pike, Ian, the last surviving cast member, was the central character in one of BBC Television's most iconic comedy series. Who do you think you are kidding, Mr Hitler, if you think we're on the run? I was the young romantic. I was playing Florizel and Romeo and all those young romantic parts at drama school, and the only comedy I had done had been restoration comedy. Ian, can you remember your very first day when you joined the Dad's Army cast? Yes, I had to report to the television centre, and there were all these people, the faces I recognised, and they'd all got suitcases. It hadn't occurred to me why I wouldn't be coming home tonight. <laughs> and that uh, this place called Thetford was a long way away. I had to rush home <laughs> and packed a bag with whatever clean bits and pieces I'd got and arrived in time for the bus to go up to Thetford. That looks a vicious weapon. No, it's quite harmless, sir. It's only an old tennis ball. Yeah, wouldn't hurt a fly, that. Look. <laughs> Stupid boy. <laughs> you were joining a cast that they were much older than you, weren't they? So were they, yeah. uh, were they helping you in terms of giving you bits of advice? Oh, yeah, totally. I likened it many a time to going to a summer school every year. We start rehearsing the second series, and Arthur Lowe takes me on one side one afternoon. I know there aren't a lot of lines at the moment, but don't worry, they'll come. In the meantime, get yourself a funny costume and stand near me. Pay attention, everybody. Mm. Uh. <laughs> Private Fraser is going to tell us the story of the old empty barn. Carry on, Fraser. Right. Well, the story of the old empty <laughs> barn. <laughs> Well, there was nothing in it. <laughs> we go away for these two, two and a half weeks filming. There we all were, sitting around the table, having had a lovely, lovely dinner and a lovely convivial evening, and for whatever reason became John Laurie's moment. Yes, it's quite amazing. When you look at us, young Lavender, green, wet behind the ears, didn't know a thing. I've taught him everything he knows, but not everything that I know. Clive started playing an old man in Prisoner of War Camp in 1944. He's playing the same character ever since. <laughs> Not a bad achievement if you can do that for the whole of your career. John the Measurer, dilettante. Arthur Lowe, leading tenor, found some fame doing soap operas, but not a lot else. And then there's me. I've played every leading part there is to play in Shakespeare and not Henry VIII and that's only because I was too thin it was a wonderful career but I've become famous for doing this crap <laughs> <laughs> the BBC is a hundred years old yes. and you were involved in one of the most iconic scenes in BBC television comedy history I am making notes Captain and your name will go on the list. <laughs> and when we win the war, you will be brought to account. You write what you like. You're not going to win this war. Oh, yes, we are. Oh, no, you're not. Oh, yes, we are. <laughs> Whistle while you work. Hitler is a twerp. He's half army, so's his army. Whistle while you work. Your name will also go on the list. <laughs> what is it? Don't tell him, Pike. Pike. <laughs> We thought we got a funny show. I don't think we realised or even thought it had got too long a life in it. And probably the only one that people say, oh, that's funny, 
is, I'm afraid, don't tell him, Pike. And to us it was, hey, this is a good script. David had told us that Philip Maddock would be playing the uh, U-boat captain. And all we knew was that that line was what we called, that's a no-taker. That's Ami Ekta, that is Ian Lavender, who played Private Pike in the Heat TV series. According to a couple of reports that are coming in in this exact moment in time, he has died at the age of 77. The Birmingham-born Lavender was just 22 when he was cast as the Gulliver's Platoon member in what was by then a new BBC sitcom. In an interview I've given you at the beginning of this video, you had him actually coming out to explain how he embodied into an older generation of actors despite the fact that he was really very very young at a time but he gelled in so well with those old actors and actually helped him to adapt of course it made him a household name when he actually entered into that sitcom and of course he ended up spending 10 years unprecedented into that movie and his name and brand grew as part of the comedy classic. Lavender who died on Friday was the last surviving man cast member of the series away from Daddy's Army by the way he also acted in so many other TV comedies such as Yes Minister I remember he appeared on stage including even in The Merchant of Venice and so many others he also had a stint I think on East Enders as Derek Hackinson, a role he reprised in 2016 for a festive storyline. <clears throat> His passing on will leave a very huge dent and gap within um, the generation of actors who actually were really very, very funny, leave alone the actors of this generation who are actually trying to be funny, trying so hard to make people laugh. These guys actually were really very comic very com uh, comic and very very funny you couldn't sit in a show with these guys and actually could not laugh he grew up in the midlands and started acting at the bristol old vic theater school and he has always been part of the huge comic industry of uk and of course his passing on will be a very very big will live will leave a big loss in the um, in the film industry of uk rest in power the king that is ian lavender 